Okay, so let's do it. So last time we talked about functors, um, and we talked about how functors are data types which have two laws, the law of identity and the law of composition. Um, the law of identity basically says if you, well, first of all, a functor is a data type which implements this function, which is pronounced fmap. And um, you can define a type class using this syntax, and then you can def you can declare an instance of this type class using this syntax. So here's where we de declared an exactly one is an instance of the functor type class um, because it implements this function fmap. And fmap is a functor is a data type where fmap behaves in this way. It follows these laws, so the, the compiler doesn't check that. So each time we implemented a functor, we check the that the laws held. And I think one thing I said last time um, was that I wanted to try implementing fmap in such a way that it didn't follow the laws, just to see if that would be helpful or lead, lead to any insights. So I, I might do that um, really fast before we dive into applicative. Okay, so Pete says, no worries, I'll be slow to respond to multitasking. Yeah, no worries. Um, I, think I, I think I got a notification that you were streaming earlier, Pete, and I hopped on for just a second. I was out walking the dog. Um, and then I had to go eat dinner, but I, I'm sorry I missed it. I would, that would have been fun to to turn the tables and see. I see that you you were also streaming Haskell, I think. So um, okay, cool. So how do we implement an F map that doesn't follow the law of identity and the law of composition? So I I suppose we could say. I mean, I think that it'd be any number of things, right? So we definitely have to take an F and we have to take a list. I, I guess we have to, the functor type class does declare the type signature of FMAP. So we have to follow the signature. I mean, I guess one possible thing would just be to ignore the function, right? I mean, I know this is kind of, uh, trivial and con contrived, but I just want to explore it a little bit. Um, the other thing I should mention is that we talked about how functor is kind of like a container, um, or that's one maybe kind of naive intuition for functor um, that breaks down when you're talking about this reader T or the function Functions are functors, but they don't have that kind of container behavior. Um, just wanted to reiterate that. Okay, so this is complaining because, ah, so it's saying this X is on the left is a list A, and we need to return a list B. It, I guess it can tell that we haven't done anything with this list. I mean, we could just append it to nil, right? And that would return a, oh, but that wouldn't necessarily turn a list B. Why can I not append it? Or is it telling me it's not a list B? Yeah, it couldn't match type of B. Yeah, so, yeah, this is why I wanted to explore this a little bit because I'm seeing that, like, is it possible to to do this? So, I mean, the only thing I have at my disposal, like, I have to return a list B, and I don't know how to construct a B, except for using this F. Like, I can't just say nil, right? I can't just say, here's a new list. Or, no, would that work? Because... Nil could be a list B. 
Just like you'd have a list of integers, the empty list of integers is nil. If you had a list of exactly ones, the empty list of nil is an, is like a list of exactly ones too. So this compiles. So this is one example of fmap that doesn't that compiles but doesn't behave correctly. So if we do test functor uh, list, I gotta add the source test functor test. I know this might be kind of silly, but that's the function test list test. Okay, so yeah, that does fail because this this first example passes. So we should, if we fmap over an empty list, we should turn an empty list. But we're just going to always return an empty list. That's not very interesting. I mean, I know that for, I think for like applicative, there's many ways to like implement, um, apply, which is how you define an applicative, which we'll talk about in a second. But that that both compile and follow the laws like there's there's different ways to follow the laws but i was just wondering if that's true of functor as well um yeah i don't know maybe i'll come back to that um just wanted to show that it was possible to write an implementation that compiles but doesn't follow the laws um and may maybe i should point out too that like our specific example for this law of identity. Let's check that. Yeah. So of course, we just we just were saying we would always return a nil list, an empty list. So this is going to return nil, which obviously isn't equal to this list. And same thing here. This obviously isn't going to work because we're just going to return nil. OK. Yeah, so let's move on to applicative. Don't want to get too in the weeds with that. So let me load source course applicative. There we go. Let me format this. I guess HLint wants that to be in some certain order. Oh, whatever. Okay, so applicative. All instances of the applicative type class must satisfy four laws. These laws are not checked by the compiler. These laws are given as the law of identity, pure ID, and this operator um, we pronounce apply. So this, this operator is pronounced apply. So pure ID, and we have this function pure as well. So we'll, we'll cover that. For all x, pure ID applied to x is equal to x. I mean, that's very similar to functor where we had ID f map over x, or yeah, it's equal to x. So that's similar. But we're doing pure ID instead of regular ID. The law of composition for all UVW, pure compose applied to U applied to V applied to W is equal to U applied to the result of V applied to W. So that's similar to the law of composition for functor as well. Somewhat similar. So it's like compose and then F map is the same as F map and F map. And this is saying pure compose apply 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 is the same as apply apply. Huh, okay. The law of homo homomorphism for all f and x is pure f applied to pure x is equal to pure f of x. The law of interchange for all u and y um, u applied to pure y is equal to pure I don't know how to read this I guess it's yeah I mean I know that I know that 
dollar sign. I know what dollar sign is, but I don't know what the uh, how you pronounce that function. It's kind of like function application. Pure this thing. Pure applied to y applied to u is equal to u applied to pure y. Huh. I might have to Google that. Okay. So let's see what Pete says. Uh, I don't think it's true of functor. From what I know with fmath, there's really only one way to implement. Okay. That's helpful. Which is why you can derive functor. I'm pretty sure that's an extension. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I've I think I've seen that where um like I don't I don't know that I've talked about whoops, hit I hit the wrong hotkey there. Um I don't think I talked about deriving So this, we're basically saying deriving equal in ordinal. I think that's what this is, ordinal. So basically saying lists are an instance of the equal type, the eek type class and the ord type class. And Haskell's smart enough to figure out or to derive the necessary function. So let's look at, let's look at eek. So class eek a is where the data type has equal not e and not equal. So it can just derive that, I guess, by comparing its elements. And ord or yeah, ord is ordering. OK, so it has to have a compare function which yields an ordering, which I think is like GT for greater than. So let's look at ordering. Yeah, ordering is data type less than, equal, or greater than. So compare returns ordering less than, less than, or equal, greater than, greater than, or equal, max, min. And minimal compare. Oh, the minimal. I think this minimal means if you implement compare in less than or equal to, it can derive the rest of them. Um, whoops. And minimal. I guess for equal, you need an equal and not equal. Interesting. Yeah, so anyways, you can derive certain uh, functions like list we can tell Haskell just like figure out how to check if two lists are equal. And so we, we didn't implement, like we didn't say list is an instance of um, equal and here's how to implement equal. But we did say show, we did tell the compiler how to show a list, which is basically how to print it to the terminal or turn it into a string, I suppose. And I think we do this because we have our custom list type. Um, Okay, so what Pete is saying is functor, because there's only one implementation, you can probably just do de derive functor, but like in a Haskell extension. Okay, sorry, belabored that. Uh, okay, so I don't know that I fully understand these laws, but um, I think I'll do the first exercise and then try to try to understand them. So we have exactly one we need to implement here and apply, whoops, okay. So pure takes an A and returns an exactly, a, exactly one A. So there's really only one way to do this. We get an A and we need to construct it into exactly one A. Well, exactly one has exactly one constructor, which is exactly one. So it's basically just take some value and construct it into this data type. So pure is just like a way to take a value and like wrap it in some other data type. So I say, pure, so if I say X 
Here one. How does, does it know what X is? Huh, it doesn't. Okay, it just knows that it's some applicative. But I guess I can say something like Hmm. I don't know. Let's do the test. Exactly one. Test exactly one. Exactly one test. So we passed the test for pure. And then apply. So we take an exactly one F, an exactly one A, and we need to return exactly one B. So let's look at the type hole for this. So to do needs to be exactly one B. We have an E F. So basically we need to get at this function, like unwrap this function and unwrap this A and apply it and then wrap it back up. So we can just deconstruct these by doing F and then saying exactly one A. So now we just say FA. Of course, this gives us a B. So then we could just reconstruct it like this. Exactly one. And then refresh. And now we can do this apply. So, and so basically we've taken this plus 10 and this eight and it's like we've applied this function to this inner value. So it's like this apply does the unwrapping of both sides for us. Whereas fmap kind of just does the unwrapping of one side. So we could do plus 10 not wrapped in exactly one and then apply and fmap that. But if we have an exactly one, 10 plus 10, and that works that way. But instead, we can also say pure here because pure does this for us, the repacking for us. So that still works. And let's test, test exactly one, test, passes. Okay, so maybe we should look at the laws now. Because I want to understand this. So I'm just going to do this and then as an exercise I'm going to try to recreate these. So maybe I should leave them so I can I go back up and back and forth. So pure ID applied to exactly one. This should be equal to exactly one. Okay. And by equal, I mean double equal. And I guess I have to wrap this. Ugh. And do I have to wrap this? So many prints. Cannot mix apply and double equal in the same infix expression. So maybe it's one of these situations where. Okay. So it just needs to wrap that. Okay, so this is just saying wrap up ID so that we can apply it to this. I mean, we could just say ID F map this. But we're trying to express this law. Okay, that makes sense. Law of composition. 
So for pure compose applied to exactly one, I'm just going to say one, two, three, basically. And then maybe I will. How do I wrap this? That should be double equal to you applied. Maybe I'll just do that. Maybe if I say format. Okay, so it actually formats. Hmm. So this should be the same as this. I'm going to put this into a single line just so I can paste it into the terminal. Except I need to wrap this. Hmm. Wrap this side too. <laughs> okay. I don't know how to. How to get this to work correctly. No instance. Oh, it's because it's an integer. Maybe if I make it a string or a character, make it a character. No, but okay. Oh, no, wait. So if I'm applying them together, what does it mean to apply an exactly one to an exactly two? That doesn't really make sense. Because apply needs to take some function in some value. So I guess these need to be Like functions. Except the last one should be a value. That's my thought, anyways. I know this is kind of awkward. If I can't get it soon, I'm just going to Google it. Maybe I should have started there. Yeah, I'm just going to Google this. Browse. So type class, oh, PDA. Maybe start with triple back ticks. Is that like a way to do multi-line expressions in GHCI or something. Not familiar with that. Exactly. F exactly G. 
Oh, I see. Maybe you're just trying to type code here. One. So this should be an F. Exactly one, two. I think it's complaining because of the like the weirdness with number types. So if, maybe if I say this is an int. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, let's just look at it in here. Applicative. Applicative functors represent an abstract line in between functor and monad. First described by McBride and Patterson. It, it it encapsulates certain sorts of effectful computations in a functionally pure way and encourages an applicative programming style. Exactly what these things mean will be seen later. Whoops, what happened? Lost my spot when I zoomed. Recall that functors allow us to lift a normal function to a function on computational effects, but fmap doesn't allow us to apply a function was, which is itself in a context to a value in a context. Applicative gives us such a tool. Apply app or splat provides a method pure for embedding values in a default effect-free context. Here's a type class declaration for applicative as defined in control applicative. So we got pure and we got apply. And then I guess this is called like right apply and left apply. Every applicative must also be a functor. Yeah, we didn't say that. That's good. Fmap can be implemented using the applicative method. So every applicative is a functor whether we like it or not. Right and left are provided for convenience in case a particular instance of applicative can provide more efficient implementations, but they are provided with default implementations. More on these operators, see the section. Okay. The best way of thinking about it comes from noting that the type of apply is similar to the type of dollar sign. Recall that dollar sign is just function application. F dollar sign X is the same as FX. In other words, apply is just function application within a computational context. The type of apply is also very similar to the type of F map. The only difference is the first parameter. F A to B, a function in a context instead of a normal function A to B. That error was actually helpful. 2 needs to be a function to b to c instead of int. Sorry, hard to give immediate feedback. Yeah, I know. Twitch chat isn't exactly like the best for synchronous communication. So both of these need to be functions. So then oh, there's no way to show it. So let's put it in an X and then say, what is X? That doesn't seem right. Is that right? Is that what we were thinking? This looks like a function. Huh. It's like we wrapped up the entire thing in a in exactly one. I guess I was thinking it would just be two here. 
Maybe I should just put a hole here and then. Okay, it's saying it should be in. Yeah, I guess because if we're going to do pure plot like compose, then compose should take two functions. So. So then now if I apply x to some value some value x is an exactly one of a fun of a fun like of a function that takes a function and a value and returns a value. That's really bizarre. So let's say it takes a plus one. So compose fg type checks. Can't see bottom of screen. My bad. So let me let me show this again. So pure composed with an exactly one of some f and exactly one of some g. And this is a this is an f map and this is an apply. But then X has this really bizarre type signature. So let's see. Pure compose. Does this need to be a apply rather than an F map? Ah, perhaps. So if I give it a one, what I would expect is that it's four, because one plus one is two, and two times two is four. Couldn't match expected type integer t. Oh, because I need to. So this is now a function, x is a function that's wrapped up in a, so shouldn't I be able to apply that to some value? Is my OBS screwed up again? Yeah, it's so annoying. It's like not showing my whole screen. See, it's like the very right of the screen. It's cut off. Yeah, that's so annoying. Why is that? Full screen. Is it to screen? No, I don't know. Pete says, oh, I'm confused. I don't think I was reading that law correctly. That's OK. Streaming recording at a higher resolution than you're capturing. Either change the base resolution or adjust the source so it fits the screen. Well, that's annoying. Did 
display capture. An OBS noob. <laughs> oh, thanks. Pete says he's going to look it up. I guess I'm just going to have to roll with it for now. I'll just have to remember to... Uh, make sure to scoot over the editor a little bit. Hopefully that works. Okay. Pure takes a value of any type A and returns a context container of type FA. Here create some sort of default container effect free context. Behavior pure is quite constrained by the laws. Usually there's only one possible implementation of pure. Hmm. Okay, here we go, laws. Identity law. Pure ID applied to V is equal to V. Pure F applied to pure X is equal to pure f of x. Homomorphism, I guess in the in here they list that as like the third law, but whatever. Applying a non-effectful function to a non-effectful argument in an effectful context is the same as just applying the function to the argument, then injecting the result. Okay, so let's try that one. That one seems straightforward famous last words. So so here we have it, law of homomorphism. So pure f, so let's let's do an exactly one plus one, which is a function. And then apply that to some pure x, which will make an exactly one like two. I'm expecting this just to say exactly one three. Oh, I forgot the closing. Couldn't match type. Exactly one integer to integer with exactly one integer to B. Okay. Pure F applied to pure X. Hmm. That really seems like it should work. Wrap in more prints. Maybe we should be using lists. Like maybe if we get to lists, it'll be easier to explain. Interchange. You applied to pure Y the pure of y applied to u. When evaluating the application of an effectful function to a pure argument, the order in which we evaluate the function, the argument doesn't matter. Ah, interesting.
Oh. Proof of applicative laws. Yeah, I think maybe maybe just continue with the exercises and then so we have a little bit more ammo to like deal with these. Unless Pete comes up with uh A way to explain it for us. So, no pressure, Pete. <laughs> so this works, I believe. I think we, I think we had all those tests pass. Test exactly one test. Yeah, those pass. So, then we're gonna do list next. Whoops. Okay. So, so this just puts it in a list. So I think we just append it to nil. Does that work? Here, well, and then this should take a list of functions and a list of A's, and then return a list of B's. So I think we need to, let's look at these. So, so list of functions plus one, plus two, nil, applied to one, two, three, nil, is two, three, four, two, four, six. So it does plus one to each of them, and then plus, then times two to each of them. So I'm just gonna start with fold right, because why not? Cons, nil, and then I think this needs to be f's. I think nil stays nil. And then this takes an f. and b's and then i think we would just want to say map f over the a's so it's like we take this first function or perhaps this, this second function, because we're doing a fold right. So we take this second function, we map it over this list, which should give us this list. And then we append that to nil, which is our b's. And then, then we loop, we go to the next one, plus one, we map that over this, and we append it to our accumulator, which is b's. So what is, uh, H like complaining about. Cannot construct the infinite type. 
Oh, because now we have a list of lists. So instead of fold right, we need like flat map. Browse course list. Flat map takes an A to a list of A list of B's. So it's like this is our F function. Or this is like our map F over A's. Hmm. I mean, I think I can just do flatten this, right? No? Let's see if that works. Compiles. Okay, so that works. Let's see. Let's follow the hlint. Done in bracket. I wonder if we can do better, like we could do a flat map here. I don't know because we need to we need to loop through this these list of functions. Let me, let me look at that again. Flat map. Flat map takes a function, an A to list P. And then it takes a list of A's and gives a list of B's. So then list of A's would be I don't know, I'm having trouble with this. I mean, we get it we got it working with this. But it just feels like I could um simplify. Let's try. Perseverance, right? Perseverance, uh, the Perseverance rover just landed on Mars today. So it's timely. Wearing my, uh, wearing my NASA hat in support of the Perseverance landing. So let's just do it this way. Let's say flat map. Let's see, flat map. Let's say it takes an F and X's. I'm going to see what the whole says. F is a function from A to list B. I think when I work through this stuff, I just did explicit recursion. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'm challenge challenging myself too much. Might be simpler to think about first. Yeah, I have the I have a fold right version working. I don't know why I feel like I should be able to simplify. Maybe I should just be satisfied with that. So yeah, maybe I'll just stick with this for the moment.
Insert into option. Well, first let's test it. Test lists. Uh, add. Test list test. Okay, those both pass. Pattern matching on F's and A's. Okay. So let's do optional. Yeah, if you if you have a suggestion for list, please let me know. I think I think if if we look at the solutions at the end, maybe they'll we'll learn something. So an optional. So pure. I guess. Does pure always do full? I guess so. I mean, why would you ever return an empty here? You could, I guess you could return an empty here, but. Oh, maybe this is helpful. So let's say pure returned empty. Then would that break any of the laws? Yeah, so pure ID. If this was this return empty, then applying it to X would just yield empty. And, but X, so. Yeah, I think that breaks the law of identity. It would probably break all of these. Well, maybe not, maybe not this one. I guess it's similar to like, yeah, I don't know. So let's do apply. So we have an OF, I can't say that because OAB, optional of A to B, optional A. Do is an optional B. So we need to unpack this stuff. So I mean, this could be empty, right? If the function's empty. Well, if it's empty, then we can't return O of A, because that's an optional A. I think we have to return empty here. Let's see if the compiler. Yeah, valid whole fits include empty. Okay, that compiles, but obviously we're only dealing with that one case. So let's say if it's a full F, and this is empty. Then we have nothing to apply our function to, so it's still empty. I think in these situations, I should probably get used to just doing the ideal case first, and then I could probably be more efficient that way. So full F, what I care about is when it's full F and full A, and then I just want a full F of A. And then every other case, I return empty, I think. Pete says, I think I understand the types for the second law composition. Um, U, UV exactly one int to int. U undefined, V undefined, W exactly one int. Well, that's garbled, sorry. Empty, I think, is all that you can return, yeah. 
in the first two cases. Okay. So you understand the types. Okay, so where u and v are in exactly one int to int, and where w is in exactly one int. Okay, so let me let me let me finish this and then we'll go back to that. So I think this passes because if they're not, if they're both full, we can do something. Otherwise, it's just going to be empty every time. So then let's test optional. Okay, that passes. Let's demonstrate. Okay. So if the value's empty, the function's empty, that's empty. But if we have a full plus one, applied to a full one that's full two. Okay, makes sense. Cool. So then let's go back to this. So maybe I should just say u is exactly one int uvw let's say u equals and then oops no that wasn't it it was into end and then this would be plus and then let's do our functions Okay, so then let's try this. Reload. Why is it not in scope? Do I have to say like course dot applicative dot w? Yeah. Okay. Oh wait, that okay. So maybe I should just say f equals this. No, not that. This and then see what it evaluates to. Okay, I can't do that. Let's do foo. Let's see. Foo. Not in scope. So is it course dot applicative dot foo? Ah, okay. I don't know why this isn't letting me why everything is scoped like that. It's weird. Type foo. Okay, so now it works. Oh, okay. So then this foo should be equal to this. 
Ah, okay. Ah, Hlint, what do you want? Oh, okay, this is a bool. So I'm gonna call this prove um opposition. I mean this is just for uh just for exactly one though. So Still, that's kind of cool. So maybe what I'll do is I'll put it here. Question is, can we do the others like this? Thanks for that, Pete. Yeah, I guess just like defining the types like this, because it, GHCI gets really confused about numbers. So I'm wondering if I can do a similar thing here. So now that we've defined those, like this one, we'll say, instead of F, I'm going to say foo, say like, Foo is exactly one end to end. Or maybe I'll just say foo is equal to u. Because we already have that. And then x. x is equal to w. then this one is like saying, then this should work. Prove well, morphism. It would have been more helpful if they named them F G X instead of U V W. I agree. I definitely agree. Because it wasn't clear that the first two were supposed to be functions and then this was W. I might even, honestly, I might even just change it. Well, maybe not because then they won't be defined. Or maybe I will because why not? Okay, X. F, G, X. I like that better. So then U is F, V is G, then W is X, then foo is equal to F. I might just have to, I'm just going to do it this way. I'm going to have to comment all this out because there's F's everywhere in this. <laughs> so once we've already seen this, so I'm just going to um, comment it out. So, foo, exactly one. So maybe if I just do it this way, then, then I can just paste this. Variable not in scope f. Right. Q 
put and match type exactly one int to int with exactly one int to b0. Pure f. Let me just check these. Variable not in scope. Can I just manually define these then? f x f applied to x should be three. Okay. So then pure f applied to pure x. What is that? Oh, f isn't f isn't wrapped. Maybe is that why? And pure. Okay, so this is just dealing with like regular values. Uh. So let's say just do pure f1 apply to pure 2 is 3. OK, yeah, I, I think I was way overthinking that. Yeah, I should just read. I, I should check for your comments more often, Pete, because they often just like explain what's happening. <laughs> I'm making such an ugly face and the, the Twitch stream is slightly behind. Yeah, okay, so I way overthought that. So it's just, we can simply demonstrate this with um, this. This thing, don't need those, is equal to pure plus one to two. I might not need all of those prints, but oh, is it the type thing? This side works. No, it doesn't. Yeah, because it doesn't know it's exactly one. Ugh. So do I need to say like prove yields in exactly one int and then prove equals this expression? Oh. Yeah, I mean, how is it how does it know these are what type these are if we're using pure right here? Couldn't match expected type. Exactly one in actual type bool. Yeah, so I mean this is a bool. Yeah. Anyways, I don't know that it's important to get the that to compile or to work to get it to work in my terminal. I mainly just want to understand it. So this helped me to actually understand. Cause this just said we have an exactly one F, an exact one G, and then this X here. And it was just we composed these two together and then apply it to three. So it was just like unwrapping each of these, combining them. And that's the same thing. That's like saying inject compose into F and G. And so then you have a composed F and G, like exactly one F of G. And that's the same thing as just applying them in sequence. 
So I get that. I mean, law of composition. This one is just saying this is not that intuitive yet because we're not really haven't really seen the effects like the article was talking about um effectful um functions and context so it's just saying pure should not have any effects basically so lifting this function into some applicative data type and then applying that to some value lifted in some pure i guess that's why it's called pures because it doesn't yeah it doesn't like have any effects i wonder what the definition of effect is in that because i don't think it means like io but I guess it could mean I.O. Yeah, I guess it could mean I.O. The law of interchange. Yeah, this is saying, this one is saying you apply to pure Y is the same as, like, if you flip these arguments. And then I think maybe we look at the plus operator. Am I confusing associative? Associative property. Property is some binary operations. Okay, yeah, that's not. It kind of seems like this is saying it's applicatives are associative. So just like you can say one plus two, you can say two plus one, and it's the same thing. I don't know if that's exactly what this is saying. Because it seems here that u is a function. Anyways, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna persist onward, try to wrap up applicative module. Okay, next up is this reader. Like functions are applicative. Ooh, this one's always rough. So I'm, I think I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite this syntax so the put the arrow in uh, infix instead of prefix. So this is basically just saying lift a value into a function, which we can do just by saying const, right? Because it's saying given a value return this function which takes some value and then ignore it and then just return the value we're given so const does that exactly do we test optional test Whoops, wrong thing. Applicative. Test optional test. Okay, cool, that passes. So I'm pretty sure this is right. Function. Looks like they don't have any. Oh, yeah, here, past function instance pure. So T. Huh. 
just see if the quick fix worked. So I think this is saying T T to B. Okay. So <laughs> this is interesting. Given a function that takes a value and returns a function, and a function that takes a value and returns a value, returns an A, then return this function. It's pretty bizarre. So I'm going to say TF, TA, and then we need a TB here. So this TB should be a function from T to B. And then we have this TF and this TA. So when I, whenever the whole is a function, we can just drill down further and say, Okay, supposing I had this t, so I'm going to create a function which takes a t, and now there's a t in scope, then I think this should just be a b. So, yeah, so we need a b, we have a t. So now I can just chain these together. So TA takes a T and I can get an A. And then TF takes a T and an A. So I can say apply TA to T and then apply T to TF. And then also I need this A. So this T T T A applied to T yields a an A. And then T F needs a T and an A. So here's the T, here's the A. So then let's check. Test function test. Boom, okay, that passes. So let's uh, says we can remove these outer brackets. Redundant lambda. Hmm, okay. So I guess we can put the T on this side because because it's the last arguments we can really like remove these brackets here. And then we can just remove this lambda. So I think just to make this more clear, I'm going to say this is an F, this is an A, this is a T. I might even just say maybe it's even easier just to say this is x, y, so then I could say like that. Ah, maybe x is better thought of as a it's like a G. Yeah, because I'm like taking this F and this G and then some value. So then I'll change this to X. Huh, okay.
it's interesting how like even using one letter um one letter names like it's still kind of important which letter you choose <laughs> hi pedro uh that's the s combinator yeah so this is the s combinator from the SKI combinators. I didn't realize that. Thanks for pointing that out. Let me just confirm that. So SKI combinators. The S combinator Substitution operator it takes three arguments and then returns the first argument applied to the third, which is then applied to the result of the second argument. Yeah, so there it is. X, Y, Z, X, Z, Y, Z. We, ha we just have F, G, X. So we're saying F, X and G, X. So for anyone who's not familiar, um, S the SKI combinators is like one um, a, a combinatory logic computational system that may be perceived as a reduced version of the untyped lambda calculus. So basically, uh, how do you succinctly explain this? Basically, these three things. Um, well, maybe I should say lambda calculus. Was it Alonzo Church who basically proved that lambda calculus is uh, enough to express any computation? So lambda calculus is just variables, functions, and function application. And then SKI is like you don't even need any possible function you just need these three functions variables and function application and just with these three functions you can express any computation um, which is really kind of crazy to think about so i is just like identity k is just like the constant function and then s is the substitution which it's really weird to think that this is enough to express anything. <laughs> Maybe some people are not really, um, that's not really interesting to some people, but for some reason that just blows my mind. It makes me want to explore, explore further. Okay, so we have the, we just did the applicative for T. I think it's really cool that it feels like you're touching some kind of bedrock here because it's like when when it lines up so nicely, like pure is const, um, pure is full. I guess these that's why these uh, data types are so prominent and useful. Okay, so then um, lift two. By the way, I'm curious when um, when you all are doing Haskell, if you if you're Haskell programmers, do you leave your type signatures like multiple lines like this? Is this easier for you to read? The course has all of the type signatures like this, but for whatever reason, I just want to inline it like this. I mean, given this this one's especially long, but um, I just like it in a single line. Okay, so lift two. Um, so notice we're not. So these exercises were we're declaring instances of the applicative um, type class, and this exercise is not doing that. It's just implementing this lift two function. So it says we take a function which takes two arguments a to b to c. And then we take an applicative A and an applicative B and return an applicative C. So this is kind of just like 
apply, but an apply that takes two arguments. So the apply takes, you know, function, and then an optional a. Ex except I guess this function. Maybe it's it's instead of an apply that takes two arguments, it's more like fmap that takes two functions. So if I look at the signature for fmap, show put this here. fmap takes this function and some functor a and returns some functor b. And this takes a function which takes two arguments and then it takes two applicatives and returns an applicative. No argument. Okay, so I've got an F, and I got a KA, and a KB. To do. It's taking a uh, reload. It's taking a long time. Pedro says, these days I'm leaving in multiple lines. Interesting. Pete says, I'm starting to like multiple lines for longer types. Okay. Yeah, I mean, for this one, I could see how maybe it would be useful. Yeah, so, but maybe I'd want to do it like... I don't know. Okay, so the whole is we need an applicative C. We have this KA, KB, we need KC. Um, yeah, so I think we just, so just like FMAP, So yeah, I think there's two ways we could do this. We could use pure. Yeah, so maybe I'll start with that. So maybe I will start with F map. So I have this F and I can F map it over K A. So let me just say let X equals this in some hole and just see what x gives me. So x, okay, is a k of b to c. And I have a kb, so then I could apply that because that's what we've been working on this whole time is functions that, um, you know, take some f in some context and some value in some context and like kind of go inside these contexts, apply this function to this value. So then we can just, um, we have this x and then we can apply it to kb. So x and then kb. So this b gets passed through this function. We get a c, but it's left inside this context. So we get a kc. That's looking pretty good. So then let's do test lift to test. Interesting. So most of them passed. Failed, lift to plus over list. I wonder if we didn't implement list right. Did we forget to test list? Well, that works. Hmm. So let's look at that.
So then lifting this This should give us an exactly 115, which it does. And this. Ah, okay, so this one we'd expect to give us five. Five, six, seven. Six, seven, eight. Yeah. Hmm. So let's let's try it this way. Let's do our um, basically the way we implemented it. Interesting. So this gives us a list of functions. Hmm. Maybe we should maybe the tests for list here are not like rigorous enough to test our function. Like maybe we actually did do it wrong and it's just we're not catching that somehow. Hmm. Any thoughts? I'm not sure why this isn't working right. Pure for list is wrong. Never mind, it's not wrong. Okay. You lift a value into some list basically by, just like in regular Haskell, you just wrap it or append it to an empty list, like cons it to an empty list. Actually, can I do that here? Yeah. So our custom way of doing that is just this. What happens if you pure nil? Huh. Shouldn't this be should this be flat though? No, I guess not. Because if A is a list, then we need a list of A's or a list of lists. Why is that? That's so weird. Okay, lift two. Maybe let me replace this let in. Test lift two failed. So, whoops, this works, this doesn't work. Why is that? Huh. Definitely compiles. Let's try these. So that's right. This should be empty. Can you apply for list? Let's try. Apply seems to work. Let's try applying to an empty list.
What is it? What about an empty list applied to a list? Yeah, that should be empty. Hmm. I check your apply definition. Does that pass tests? I think so. So if I do test list test, since pure instance apply. But yeah, it could it could be that these uh, tests are not sufficient to check everything. Let's look applicative test. List. F two test plus over list. Wait, is this test wrong? Well, I mean, our 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 functions are turning an empty list, so it's our functions definitely wrong. But but plus, I would think this would be five, six, seven, six, seven, eight, and this says five, six, six, seven, seven, eight. Or maybe it's doing, okay, is it doing 1 plus 4, 1 plus 5, and then 2 plus 4, 2 plus 5? Yeah. Yeah, so maybe it's, maybe it's doing it that way. How can, how can I, um, how can I further test this? Like stress test this apply function. Maybe I'll throw in some like minus, like a x minus one. Doesn't like that. Oh, it needs to be an arrow. F2. Yeah, maybe I need to just um, redo this. Or maybe I'll just look at the solution. OK, so apply for list. We have a list of functions, and we have a list of A's. And we need a list of B's.
think I have to loop over F's, like the list of functions. So that's what I was doing here. It's like loop over F's, and then I have a specific function and then I map that over all the A's and append that. What's failing? Assuming apply is good, although I don't fully understand the implementation. Yeah, so I think the way I'm understanding how I implemented it was I have a list of functions. I'm folding right over that list of functions. So then I have a particular function here. And then B's, which is like the cons or the, the nil value I have. So I map that function over the list of A's and then append that list to B's. Maybe I should maybe I should concatenate it to B's. And then I don't need to flatten. I wonder if that makes any difference. That'd be interesting if that fixed it. List test. Okay, that still passes. No, okay, lift two test still fails. Shoot, I think I'm just gonna look at the answers because I'm really stumped. feel bad looking at the answers, but I mean, this makes sense to me. This passes all the tests. Maybe one thing I could try instead of this style is like, I could just say pure, pure F applied to KA applied to KB, right? That should work. What if you map instead of folding? Let me try this first. Hey, that works. That's that's weird. So here I'm saying pure F. So that's like lifting F. So that's like lifting F into this context K. So for the case of list, that would put it in a list of functions. Which I assume would just be a, li a, a list with a single element, which is one function F. And then apply that to KA, just some list, and then you apply that to another list. So let's try demonstrate. But but either way should work, right? What if you, so Pedro says, what if you map instead of folding? I'm assuming you mean map um, in my apply, like how I implemented apply for list. So if I map map this function over f's. I think I, I'm, I will need a flat map maybe. So before pure f, so before, so But this function map, this function should only take a single argument, right? So it, it takes a function, and then we map that function over A's and append it to B. We don't have B's, so that's the problem, right? So do we just remove this then? Because this returns an array.
So then this should be flat map. Then what does this want? Just so I can just say do infix map. Map A, so that's really kind of cool. Whoops. So then let's see if this works though. Test, list test. Okay, that still passes. Let's try the lift too. That still passes too. Okay. That's pretty cool. I meant to do this as a separate. So let me, let me, um, on like rewind a little bit here. And then, because I, I would like to keep both of these. Okay. So this was our like fold right implementation. Here's our like fancier version. I wonder if we could like make this point free. <laughs> Maybe that's just not necessary, but yeah, it's a little bit too much, right? Flip, flip. Kind of, kind of cool to see though. Okay, so let's answer um, Pete's question. So Pete asked. What did I have before this? So what I had before this was um, f f mapped to k a, then applied to k b. Actually, let's let's confirm again that all of our tests are passing. So lift two test pass. So then let's try this implementation. See if this fails now, or if the yeah, so that still fails. Maybe so maybe it's actually the F map for list is wrong. So let's try let's try adding test uh, functor test. And then let's do test test functor. Good night. Oh, okay, yeah, so I actually we had some failing test in functor. That would explain it. So which tests are failing? List increment. That's funny. Oh, because <laughs> like right when I started the stream, I was I was trying to I was trying to like think through what what would be an impl implementation of F map that didn't that compiled but didn't follow the laws, <laughs> the functor laws. And then I never switch this back. <laughs> so we were working with a broken implementation of, of fmap for list. So if I save this and then I reload, then uh, that passes. And then test applicative or add source test applicative test. Test lift to test. Yeah, okay, now it passes. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Oh, man. Wild goose chase. I feel like I just learned an important lesson, though. So either of these, either of these work. So you can, you can first lift F into an applicative and then apply it, or you can that's this version, or you can just like inject it kind of with this F map, inject it into the context or raise it into its own context and apply. Kind of cool.
<laughs> oh man. Okay, so lift three. So here's where maybe us putting them all in a single line is a bit bit crazy, but um So I take an F, A, B, C. Pretty sure I can just lift two. So let's look at the type signature for lift two. It takes a function and an A and a B. So I think I can just do lift two, F, A, B. And then apply this to C, and it, maybe I don't need brackets, redundant bracket. So it's basically just lift and then apply another argument. Test lift three, test, yeah. And then I think lift four is gonna be a similar thing So it's just going to be F, A, B, C, D, and then left three, F, A, B, C, applied to D. Yep, okay. Lift zero, apply a nullary function in the environment. And this is just pure. This looks like the signature for pure. Is there no test? Lift one. No, lift. Is there no lift zero test? Doesn't look like it. And I'm not sure how to uh, confirm that I'm doing this right, but I mean, it is the same signature as Pierre. So. So let's think about it. So lift two. So like lift one looks just like F map, which I imagine it is. Apply unary function environment can be written using lift zero and apply. I think these are just trying to trying to help you see applicative from all these different angles just so you really get it. So lift one lift one just looks like map or F map. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say F map. And then, and then I'm going to go back and say, like, try doing it how they say to do it. So then lift one. So that's true. Okay, so lift one is just F map. But let's try to do it like they say to do it. So it can be using, using lift zero, which is basically pure. I mean, it is pure. Lift zero, apply to A, which is just pure F applied to A. And that passes. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of cool. So it's kind of like taking you through left one is basically just F map, and then left zero is like 
like pure. Okay, and then this is apply right or right apply. Discarding the value of the first argument. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're just changing each of these values into this value. So four, five, six, four, five, six, four, five, six. Hmm. Pete says, I still haven't wrapped my head around lift one only requires functor, but lift n for n greater than one requires apply applicative. Lift one only requires functor. Is that true? So I could I could replace applicative here the type constraint with functor and it would I guess so because this is just a F map. Because we can So if I can say this is just the same as fmap. My dog is snoring. <laughs> if you can hear that on stream, that's what it is. Um, So then this should, I should be able to change this to, to functor. Because it doesn't have to be an applicative. Interesting. But if we're going to implement it the way they challenged us to, then we have to require an applicative because we're using apply and lift, I mean, and pure. So then, so we can't, yeah, okay. So we can't write lift two in terms of just fmap. I think I think I get it because fmap fmap it's like maybe this is like kind of a naive intuition but fmap injects a function into some context so you can do that once but then once once it's already into a, in some context you can't do that again, you know? So you can't do lift two because once you've injected it once, like if you try injecting it again, it's just gonna be like double wrapped. So it's gonna be list list or maybe if maybe. So it works once but not twice. I don't know. Is that a good ex explanation? Okay, let's try to do right apply. So, K, K, B. So we get an A and a B. I'm just not going to put the K on there. So then. I know I need to return to KB here. I 
and I don't know anything about these values. So I, I don't know what A and B are, and I, and this K could be any applicative. So it could be list or optional or whatever. So then I mean, it's an applicative. All I know to do is pure and apply. So I can just apply something to KA. I think because I want to use the structure of KA, but not the values. That makes me think I need to use const. So what do I inject in here? I think I just want to say like const. So this is going to take basically I'm thinking this is going to take a B and an A and just return the B. So it's just const. So const f map into B. And then apply that to A. And then basically this this goes into the context of A and replaces each value with the B, I think. Let's try. Compiles. Yeah, OK. So nice. Oh wait, that's wrong. So it should be four, five, four, five, four, five. I think maybe I flipped them. Hmm, but now that doesn't. Could match type A with B. Hmm. So this this checks type checks, but the examples don't work right. So this should return full eight, which it does. I don't know, it's weird. Let's just go back to square one here. Maybe I mean I could just return B here that compiles but then that would just give me this right value rather than this maybe I do need to use pure somehow but that strikes me as like this should be have the same behavior, right? Test. 
the apply test. Yeah, it's doing the same thing. Hmm. Maybe I'll put what to do here. <laughs> Dog is snoring so loud. Could be worth looking at apply again. You're getting all the right values, but in the wrong order, right? Yeah. So maybe I did do apply for list wrong. especially since it works for all the other types. Data constructor not. Oh, because I have this type of hole. Yeah, it's, if I said like divide by two, <laughs> hey, Pluminator, yeah, cruising through. So let's see, we did. Um, we did functor on Monday and we're on plicative, so making good progress. Trying to figure out why this isn't working right. So test, write, apply. So we have this write, apply, which should be using the values from the, the right applicative and the structure of the left. So like we have this one, two, three list and four, five, six, and it should be four, five, six, four, five, six, four, five, six, but we're yielding four, 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 five, 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 six, six, six. Quite annoying. Pluminator says I'm going through state T lately. It's a huge module. Yeah, state T. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of lines. Bornered lines. We'll get there. So yeah, I wonder if this is wrong somehow. I'm going to try switching back to this fold write implementation and see if <laughs> the test pass. No, I still fail. Okay. Yeah, because these these should be the same. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's our I don't think it's our implementation of apply for list. Cause I, I mean it works as advertised, like 
we get this list of functions. Oh, maybe I need to, um, so maybe instead of doing const fmap into b, Well, I just started to think in terms of list, but we can't, right? Because this has the this is any applicative, so it's like I can't start folding. I mean, it's an applicative, so all I have at my disposal is fmap apply and pure. I I can fmap because all applicatives are functors, so. Hmm. So frustrating. B. Once again, just go back to the type of toll. So new KB. If I just return the B, that should compile. I'm going to try, um, this is like really frustrating. It's like recompiling the entire course rather than just the, uh, rather than just the module I care about. Pedro says your problem is order of A applied to B. Hmm, let me look at that. Yeah, I thought I um, switched these and then it like yelled at me saying, yeah. Couldn't match type A with B. Or are you saying I need to do like A applied to const B like that? A should be leftmost. But this says it still doesn't like this. Can match type A with B zero to B to B. Because A is I mean, A is not a function, so can you apply it? I don't think so. So, I mean, I could do, put a to do here. I could say let x equal this and to do. Use the holes, Luke. Yeah, so this X is like a B1 to B. It's weird. To do F map A, apply B. That's a good idea. So basically, which function do we want to put here? Uh, 
Uh, you know, maybe maybe it's like um, so like const. I think I get it now. So to do is an A to B to B. Yeah, so const is A, B, A. And that works, like if I do const on B and then apply that to A, then that gives me the 444555. But what I, it's rather doing A, B, A, I want to do A, B, B and then apply it to A first. So it's like, is there, there's, is there a word for that function? So you take an X and a Y and return the Y. But H, H length will tell me if there is. It's flip. It's just flip const, right? Let's see if this works. Test, write, apply. Is there some thing I can give to a uh, stack or to GHCI to say like? Don't please don't like try to <laughs> um, compile everything. Test write apply. Yay! Thanks, thanks Pedro. That was right. Thanks for pointing me in the right direction. So let's say let's change this to flip const. And I guess I don't need these prints. I don't have a good intuition yet for when I need parens and when I don't. Cool, so that works. So I'm pretty sure that this left apply then is just going to be, rather than flip const, it's going to just be const. Oh, this takes a B and then an A and it returns a B. I mean, that, but those letters don't matter. It's the same thing. Yeah, so this one, yeah, so we just <laughs> so we just implemented left. I was implementing left uh, left apply. So this is just regular const, but it takes B and then A. It's confusing to me that they switched the letters on us. Test left apply pass nice. I just keep GHC running and do test. Oh, okay, so you just keep it running and just have this running all the time. So noisy though. Okay, sequence. Let's see, how many more exercises? Sequence, replicate A, filtering. Okay, only three more, but they're hard ones. You have to run it in the root dir of FP course. Yeah, but I don't really want to run the, this is a really old computer. And it's like, I mean, you can already tell like it struggles. So also I, I like just seeing the single test that I care about. I don't know maybe I'm being picky. Sequence is a list of structures to a structure of list. So this is we did um in list we did this exercise called seek optional which takes a list of optional A's and returns an optional of list A's. And this, it uses this twice optional function. So if we keep digging here and we go to optional, and we go to look at twice optional. Hmm, this looks familiar. A, B, C, optional A, optional B. Let's look at Go back to applicative. This looks an awful light like cliff two to me.
Yeah. So let's go down to sequence. Maybe I should copy this um, seek optional thing. Just to show. My left, um, left apply B const oh can I do some edit reduction here const b okay so I can just like wrap this is that right oh figuring out lift 2 Good eye. Yeah, thank you. Test left play. Oh, cool. So this does work. So we can, so it always feels good to like sneak in that, uh, some edit reduction. Does it work here too? Test right. Yeah. Feels good, man. Okay, so sequence. So we do a list ka to a k of list a, which is very similar to this seek optional thing we did. But we can't we can't resort to fold. No, we can because okay because we know it's a list. We just don't know what the k is, so we can't just use twice optional but maybe we can just drop in since those have the types the same type signatures can we just drop in lift two that'd be kind of cool but we don't we we don't know that it's optional so we can't use pure i mean we can't use full but we can use pure because so if we look up at the applicative for optional uh, we see this. So pure is just like the way to um, lift something into a context. So yeah, I'm going to just try this. Let's see if that works. It compiles sequence test. Awesome. So let's see what this I'm going to put a note here. So what does this look like? This is weird. Okay, so so in this case, so sequence is like a list of k's to a k of list a, but k could also be list. So it's like going from lists. That's weird. So it's like a list of lists. So it's, you're going from a list of lists to a list of lists, but you're like turning them inside out. So it's like you're doing the Cartesian product. So it's like one, one and one, one and two, then two and one, two and two, three and one, three and two. Yeah, because I mean, we're doing a pend here, so. Huh. 
<laughs> but what does it mean? Double rainbow. Pedro, I think you need apply in the function. In which function? In sequence? I think tests are passing. I was just I was just trying to like understand um what what this example means, like trying to think through it. So if I go, yeah, so this a list of exactly ones goes to an exactly one of list. Sequence. Okay, so if there's ever an empty, just bail. So then what happens if one of these lists is nil? That'd be interesting to see. Nil, okay. It's not that exciting. Oh, and you can sequence functions. So I can go from a list of functions. Huh. So if k is a function, then I go from a list of functions to a function of list. <laughs> A function that returns a list, maybe. Pedro, never mind. Lift, lift a two is right. I thought you had pure. Okay. Yeah. So I think lift two, like in in uh, vanilla Haskell. If I do this and open up uh, GHCI. SC is just my uh, bash alias. Um, so I think there's this lift A2. And maybe I have to import control applicative. Yeah. So I guess in vanilla Haskell, it's called lift A2. Can someone explain that? Why is it called lift A2? Maybe I, I browse control applicative. Are there other types of lists? I uh, lift. Wrapped arrow. Applicative. There's lift A. This looks like F map to me. A B F A F B. This is like F map that only works on applicatives. Pluminator says, I think of K in the type signature as a mechanism that produces a value. Stole it from a stack overflow plus. They call it something else. Okay. A mechanism that produces a value. You mean in the in so you're consing inside the list applicative mechanism. I'm not sure I followed that. <laughs> so you're saying like, are you talking about K in terms of like when you're thinking about the function or the reader applicative or like for all applicatives? Originally there was only monad applicative came later. Oh, so then they had to name it lift A2 because there was already a lift two for monads. So they had to differentiate it from lift two. Let's try that. Import control monad. 
Is it called control my dad? Left two. Left M. Originally, there was only monad if it came later. I appreciate pure script naming conventions after lessons learned from Haskell. Yeah, they had the benefit of of seeing Haskell's mistakes. <laughs> Or, you know, maybe mistakes is a strong word, but Pedro, and God said, there, let there be applicative, and God rested. Exactly once is a mechanism that does nothing. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, I'm going to do this um, replicate A, but maybe um, while I'm doing that, one thing I would be interested to do is, uh, so we, we talked through the, the functor laws, and then we talked through applicative laws, and all applicatives are functors. So can someone tell me an example of a functor that is not an applicative? I feel like that would be helpful for um, getting a better intuition. Because like every functor I've come across seems to also be an applicative. That's a challenge for you. Maybe it's really easy, but uh... okay, replicate a replicate and effect a given number of times. Use course list replicate. So course list replicate is um, like a helper function that was already in here. We didn't implement that. Replicate. Replicate takes does repeat x, which just makes an infinite list, and take take n elements of an infinite list. Okay, so maybe we should demonstrate that. So I don't think I've ever talked about on stream, the stream, like how Haskell has infinite list. Maybe I did. Oh yeah, list, list has an in infinity here, the beginning. Yeah, infinity. So you can do like take five out of infinity. Except I have to add list into scope. So even though this is an infinite list, and I could take, you know, however many of them. Um, so replicate is a way to do your own thing. Oh, just repeat the same thing a bunch of times. Oh, repeat, re replicate, sorry, replicate five ones okay optional is a mechanism that might emit the value exactly once is a mechanism that does nothing optional is a mechanism that might omit the value. I'm not sure I understand you, uh, Puminator. Pete shares blog functorial hosts counterexamples.
I'm actually like managing my Twitch stream from a different computer. So I can't just like click the link. Uh, counter examples. Okay. Certain standard hierarchies of type classes. Yeah, okay, this is the one I'm interested in. Functor apply duplicative bind monad. So is apply like a, a, cl a actual class of its own? I think maybe type class of PD will tell us. Yeah, I don't I don't know what this thing is. <laughs> I don't know what most of these things are. But this is what I'm interested in. So I'm going to skip over that one. Skip over that one. A functor monad hierarchy. Haskell's monad hierarchy is further refined in PureScript by the addition of a plot, the apply class, which contains the apply operator, but not pure. Ah, interesting. So, so it's like you can apply things, but you can't lift them into the context. And the bind class, which specifies the bind operator. So is the bind class something that has, I don't know. Is bind different than monad? Pete says, I don't claim to understand Unita yet, but apparently that is one functor that is not apply. From Phil Freeman's blog. I think apply only has pure in it. Yeah, you were right. No, apply only has apply and not pure. That's what it is. It is in pure script, not in base. Apply actually just has lift A2, I think. Or, uh, yeah, just it just has apply, not pure. Yeah. So, what about bind? Is bind different than monad? Okay, bind. Oh, is this, um, is this pure script? And they do like this backwards arrow? That actually makes more sense to me. It's like bind M, where the M is an apply. So for all AB, MA, AMB, MB. A type constructor, which is not a functor. Okay, so this is, a, this is answering my question. My question was, can someone give me an example of a functor that is not applicative because basically every one I've come across um, every functor I seem to have come across is also applicative so um, here maybe this will answer functor forces the type variable of its argument to appear covariantly don't know what that means really so a simple example of a type constructor which is not a functor is given by data op a B op B to A. Oh, okay. So let's think about this. Op can be made into a contravariant functor described by the contravariant type class. So I'm actually going to hop back over here. And say that a type that is not a functor.
it can be made to a contra variant functor. And so HLint wants me to make this a new type. If I use new type instead of data, use new, decreases laziness. I think maybe it's because it only has a single constructor. Like what if I said foo here? Will HLint leave me alone? Yeah, it does. Okay. Interesting. Uh, it's lot, lots of questions. Okay, so I'm going to play around with this a little bit. So this is not a functor. So if I say like op, so if I say x equals op plus 1, is that valid? Okay, so that's an op AA. But the claim is that this is not a functor, and I guess because is it impossible to implement fmap for it? Let's try. Instance functor op where Well, I guess I'm going to run into my first problem really quickly, which is it's parameterized by two variables. Does that matter? Fuminer says, I learned what covariance is today. It's when a list of things is a subtype of a list of things that are super types of things inside the first list. Oh yeah, that clears it right up. <laughs> covariance is when a list of things is a subtype of a list of things that are super types of things inside the first list. Wow. I re read somewhere that HLint is Neil Mitchell in linter form. Some of the recommendations are probably not universally accepted. Okay, that's good to know. So Neil Mitchell, so basically it's just some guys like very strong opinions about what Haskell should look like. I mean, I'm quite happy as a beginner just to go with it. Um, I definitely haven't liked everything it does just through my personal preference, but I figure it's better to start with HLint's practices than just whatever whatever I would stumble into. Expecting one more argument to up. Oh, okay. So I have to just say, I think I have to parameterize this with one thing. So I can say maybe like op. Can I just put this like like so? Op a is a functor. Or does it need to be like op int? Do I have to say a, like some concrete type here? So where this int? I don't know how to how to declare it like a instance for something that takes two. Does anyone know? Like how do I? Or is there another example of a data constructor that's not a functor that only like takes a single argument? I mean, I suppose I could just simple simplify this and call it just like Yeah, Pete says op is not a functor, it can't be. But I know, I'm just, I'm trying to prove that it can't be, or try to try to convince myself that it can't be. So I'm like trying to just get the uh, functor op x where. So 
so this is what op was originally defined as a b b a so so let's just do this let's say Do, or does this need to say like a? Maybe I'll try something else. So it's examples of types which are functors but not applicative. Yeah, I think I've actually seen this before when I've... Okay, this is not a functor. Yeah, this is like more straightforward, I think. So let's say, let's say I try to create one of these. TA, so TA to TB. So then I can just say that, and then I can say this is an F, this is a TA. So this always returns an int. Let's try. So I'm going to load source course functor. Oh, thanks for that, Pedro. I, I missed it before I switched to doing T. So. So I need a TB, I have this TA, okay, but I can't, so then if I try to Oh, I think I see now. So then if I try to um, unpack this, so let's say I pattern match on this so I can access this A. Well, A is a function from A to int. So it's not like a value that I could pass to F here. So I have this TB. Or I need to produce a TB. I have an A and an F, but A is not a value. It's a function. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah, so there's so I have no way to produce a B in order to construct a TB. Interesting. So I'm going to say this is a data type that is not a functor. So cannot create a TB below. That's actually helpful. So basically data types that have this structure where it's like a function.
Because they wouldn't be they wouldn't be like composable, I suppose. So then so how did we get here? We were trying to think of things that are functors but not applicatives. So then let's go back to this thing. You can make a contravariant functor out of it, but it's not a covariant functor. So covariant is what Haskell's default functors are, correct? So when Haskell says functor, what it really means is covariant functor. I think I've heard that. Try writing fmap and you'll fail. Note that the contravariant functor version is reversed. So there's a contravariant um, exercise in the course, so I don't want to get into that yet. There's this contravariant. Um, but you'll see that it's backwards. It goes A to B, and you get an FB, then you can produce an FAA. Whereas a regular functor is like this. Okay. Type constructor, which is a functor but not applicative. I don't have a good example. There's const, but ideally I'd like a concrete non monoid, and I can't think of any. All types are basically numeric enumerations, products, sums, or functions when you get down to it. You can see below pig worker, and I, I guess this is another stack over phaser, and I disagreeing about whether data void is a monoid. I don't understand this. A type constructor, which is a functor, but not. So it's like, basically, this person is saying that they, they can't think of one. I don't know what const is. I const. Anyways, let's see, maybe maybe this has one. A functor which is not an apply. There's a functor for any type structure given by the Yonita or Yoneta lemma. F A for all R A to R F R the heck? Pig worker is Connell Elliot. Oh wait, no. I don't know who Connell Elliot is anyway, so Connor McBride. Okay, maybe this is a more something on my level. An apply which is not applicative. The constant functor. So this supposedly is a functor that is not applicative. So let's try. So duplicative const. I need x here, I guess, where const
I'm not sure why I know who Connor McBride is, but I don't know what idiom brackets are. <laughs> and now I want to know. <laughs> idiom brackets, yeah. You guys are on a, another level, I think. I'm just... I'm just a lowly carrot farmer trying to understand what applicative is. So, um, load source applicative. <laughs> I do know what idiom brackets are. Maybe you can explain, Pete. Found whole. So I'm trying. So this whole to do one is like if we were to implement pure for const. So I need a const of x a. I guess I can't do this because Let's see. So X is an A. That's confusing. This would bring everything back together from the start of the episode, Logan. Dollar sign is like apply. I'm not sure if I'll. <laughs> dollar sign is like apply. Can you explain that? How is dollar sign like apply? Oh, I'm getting tired. I really want to finish this, though. Okay. I think I'm going to table this for, for a minute, um, trying to come up with a functor that is not applicative. But apparently this is one, so maybe I'll come back to this. Or maybe you guys can explain to me. Guys and or gals. Um, see, so we did sequence. So now we need to do replicate A. Get replicate in effect a given number of times. Use courseless replicate. Replicate just re like creates n number of values. So replicate A, what does it do? So replicate A for exactly one high. Okay. So replicate for, so if I was to load source course list and do not replicate a, but replicate for, let's look at replicate. It takes an N and an A and returns a list A. Maybe let's do replicate like integer A.
Why is that not in scope? Don't understand. So that works. Does this work? Okay, so that works. So, but replicate A for a full one would, would instead do full one, 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 rather than four of them. So it's kind of like sequence, and we're probably going to end up using sequence. Hmm. Okay, so Chad is talking about how dollar sign is like apply. And I think I start to see where that's going, but I don't want to task switch too much. So I want to finish um, this first and then I'll come back to that. So int. So an N and a KA, and I need to have a K list A. So I'm just going to do to do follow the holes, Luke. I don't believe you. It's saying three models modules loaded. Okay, so hmm. I have an N which is an int, and I have a KA. And I need a K list A. And this thing says to use course list replicate. Is that imported? Whoops. Yeah, course list. So then, gonna do replicate in. Ah, so if I do replicate in KA, then that should produce like a list of KAs and then I can sequence it. Okay, it compiles. Okay, that passes. So let me just uh, go over why, like, let me just remove the sequence and say, let x equal this thing in to do, and then refresh this. I'll wait until my Haskell language server catches up. Okay, so, okay, so by doing replicate, in ka so ka is some um applicative so it could be like a full like a full high or an exactly one high so this x is like a list so x is like a is like this kind of thing And then uh, sequence, which we just implemented, takes that kind of thing and turns it into this kind of thing, like flips the types inside out. So then we just sequence this like so. Bam, and that passes. Cool. So, while chat is nerding out, I'm going to, to push forward so that I can finish the last exercise and then join in the nerding out. Okay, uh, so, Filtering, let's read filtering. Filter list with a predicate. 
that produces an effect. This seems like a weird function to me. Okay, so so you give it a predicate, but it's like an applicative. So it's some predicate wrapped up. even composed with exactly one. And then you take this list and then it should produce an exact. So it like filters, okay. So it's like some predicate that's like lifted No, the predicate like returns a bool lifted into some context. And then you have some list. And then you search through the list and return the items that match the predicate, but still inside the the context. So exactly one, four, six. If A is greater than thirteen, then empty else full. Else full A is less than or equal to seven. What the heck? Four, five, six. Okay. I guess this is demonstrating like filtering for functions as an applicative. True, true. Cons, true, true. Trying to trying to understand this last one. So this is saying const applied to this list of predicates, which just are true. So then it's one, two, three, true, true. So it's like it's weird. So I have some predicate, I have my A's. I have a list, I'm just gonna fold right. Cons, nil, A's. This is filter M. I haven't had much use for it, but I don't have much experience with Haskell in production. That's good to know. Filter M. I'm actually going to look at that. Filter M. Yeah, it seems seems weird. I imagine them exercise mostly about fitting types together. Who made it? Bad network got dropped out of the stream for a while. I had chat, but last I read, Pete showed how dollar sign is similar to applicative. What did I miss? So you didn't really miss much anything, Pluminator. I just solved the uh, replicate A. I might. I was basically trying to solve the 
exercises and then maybe after that we can talk about the dollar sign apply thing because it's midnight my time so I'm trying to wrap it up <laughs> so let's try to line up these types let's see um follow the holes okay so i need a cons is like an a to a k list a to k list a nil is a k list a So I can make a K list A pretty easily by saying pure nil. Because nil is a valid list A, no matter what A is. And I can create a K of it by saying pure. So that solves one of my typed holes. And then cons needs to be this thing. So I'm just going to say A k a's like pete said this is probably just an exercise in lining up types which i'm quite happy to do so if we take an a and k a's now we need a k of list a we have one in scope obviously But I have this A and I have this P, which takes an A. So I should probably use it. So let's do that. So I'm going to say let B for Boolean equals P applied to A in to do. So this is my predicate. I check, I'm basically checking this A. And that should give me a k bool. So maybe I'll call this kb. So I need a k list a's. I have this k bool. Basically, I think I need to check this bool. If it's true, then this A I need to like append to this list of K list A's. Or I could just build up a list of K A's and then sequence it. That sounds way easier. Because I have this handy function sequence, which should like flip the types for me. So I could just build up this and then flip it. So let's do that. So how do I? How do I check the bool that's inside a context? Well, maybe I would inject a. So first of all, let me wrap this. And then let me say, let this and this So want me to get rid of the A's. Yeah, OK. So if I have a KB, then I could inject basically f map a function into it that takes a B. And then I could say like if B, then something else something.
So, this is tricky. So, I, ha I should probably use this accumulator, which is of type K list A. So if B is false, then I think I just want to return list. Like this, filtering. Greater than. Yeah, so it's like this ex example is maybe the easiest. So I want to, if it's five, so then this would be exactly one even. I, so I guess this would produce like an exactly one false. And then in which case you don't append it to this list. So I think this is right. If B is false, then turn this list. But then isn't this going to be double wrapped? So like KA's is going to be it's going to be injected in here. So maybe I need to unwrap this somehow. Maybe I just need to follow the types. So this to do should be a list A, yeah. But I don't have a list A. It's a problem. So maybe I shouldn't be doing this F map here. Hmm. Well, maybe I should, uh, maybe I should have, uh, talked about this, um, why the dollar sign is like apply. I just thought I could wrap up this exercise faster. It's rough. Any tips? Do I need Kayla's day? Oh, wait, so I have this KB. Yeah, I mean, I need to have this P and this A, and so I apply it, and I get this KB, 
It's like, I have to do something with KB, but all I know about it is that K is some applicative. What can I do with an applicative? Well, I can apply or fmap. Use fold write and forget sequence for a second. Okay. Also, what do you call it when you take a function and apply it inside a context? Oh, never mind, you're already using fold write. So, so I need, yeah, I mean, I have this f map here. So it's like f map into kb. So, I went down this path, but then I f feel like I just got stuck. So this should take a bool and return a list. So it takes a bool. I need to return a list here. I don't have any list in scope. I have a K of list A. So how do I I guess I could say if if b then something else I need to return a list so I just return nil But if it's true, then I want to append. It's like, if it's true, then I want to like filter this A. I want it in my list. So maybe I just do to do right here. Your cons takes two arcs. List A. A predicate in the rest of the list, same as in filter. But you have to do it in an applicative. Yeah, so maybe I should refresh myself on how filter works. If px, then x appended to x's, else x's. Yeah. So that's really similar to this. To do it in an applicative. Am I right in thinking I have to use this, um, like KAS here? Because that's my accumulator. And this function needs to return a, like a K of list A.
and this is getting injected into this context. So whatever gets returned here is going to be in the context. How do you use a two arg function in an applicative with lift? So you went to cons A onto K's. K A's based on K B, correct. So I guess I need to like lift this entire function. Okay. So oh I see. So I need to do lift two. That takes some function. And then that takes two arguments, K B and K A's. And then I'll have Ah, uh, then I'll have a B and I'll have an A's, I think. Let's look at what to do says. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, so I have my A's now. Ah, perfect. Yeah, that just gave me a much better intuition for lift. because I, I have these two values in the same context here, and I need both of them at once. So yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so then instead of nil, I'm just gonna put A's here, and then I'm gonna append A to A's. I think that should do it. Oh man. Test filtering test. Oh man, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna. I don't really need to. Uh, let's say PA here. So satisfying. Maybe I should call this like something. I don't know. I'm just going to leave it because I'm tired. Oh, you can add or reduce the lambda. How? I'm going to cheat and use point free dot io. Because I'm tired. Let's see. Show me how point free. I think you have too many lambdas, pun intended. Never mind, I was wrong. Hmm, point freeze. Did I crash point free? I think I might have. <laughs> I don't know if I can add or reduce that. The inner lambda? Oh. Oh. Oh, this one. I see what you're saying. This one.
<laughs> okay, so now I think we got it. So let me do test, test, applicative. Ah, uh, yes. We did it. We did it, friends. I'm sorry I didn't get back to this uh, conversation fast enough for... Uh, Because it's been it's been a long time, so let's look at these types, and then we'll wrap it up. So the type of this I'm just going to say notes. And then I'm going to say and notes so then um, so if we look at apply So did I miss something for filtering? So if B, then A append. Oh, cool. OK, yeah. Else ID. I never think to use ID like that. That's clever. So then I can take away these A's. So then now this Lambda returns a function which takes the A's. So if B, it returns this function, also returns ID. That's cool. So clever. Boom. OK. So then, where was I? So this, OK, so the dollar sign is like just applying a function to an argument and apply it's almost like this should be called apply right and this should be called like Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is like, what do you call this if this is called apply? But this apply splat, like this splat apply takes a function in some context and a value in some context and applies the, the function to the value. That's cool. I would add fmap in between. So then, yeah, so fmap is kind of like halfway, right? So oh, dollar sign is called function application. Apply is more general. Dollar sign is equivalent to exactly once. Is exact what is exactly once? Is that a function? Or is that like a data type? Mm -hmm. 
fly. Yeah, this is cool though. So it's a function application and then fmap like it injects the function into a context and then applies like the functions in a context. Oh, exactly one. So I, I never drew that parallel. So you're saying function application is equivalent to exactly one. But how is how is dollar sign equivalent to it? Because dollar sign is like a function and exactly one is a data type. Oh no, you're saying I think maybe you're saying that dollar sign is equivalent to doing like exactly one composed with apply applicative instance for exactly one right 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 okay so pure pure just wraps it and apply just this pure fa okay I thought exactly one was just like a toy data type, but you're saying in ha in vanilla Haskell it's called identity. Identity. Is it like a data? Second one basically is just pure values. Yeah. Data functor identity. Identity A, identity, run identity. Interesting. I wonder why, like, why is this useful? Oh, there's a monad identity too. Interesting. Oh, control monad. I think it's useful for, useful for higher level programs, just like we use the ID function, also just for completion's sake. Ah, yeah. 
That's cool. So it's like a way to lift like a whole function. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I think that'll have to do it for for me. It's been a long stream. I didn't mean to do such a long stream, but um, that was fun. Yeah, we got through the whole applicative <laughs> applicative uh, module. Gosh, I, I guess I can't help myself but to compare the solutions. Can't help myself because, like, I'm just so tired. I was just going to call it a night, but I'm going to do this first. It's like, like identity in addition. For why do you need a zero? Yeah. Yeah, it's like the... It's like the data type that doesn't do anything. It's interesting. Okay, so applicative exactly one. This, this is the same. Yeah, he used he used the data constructor instead of pure. And then some of Tony's stuff uses stuff that's not in the course yeah so list hey we we got the same one that's cool yeah then uh optional yeah so we did so we did the pattern matching and he used bind optional and map optional. I actually think this is just more straightforward. Okay, yep, that's the same thing. Yep, same thing there. Lift, the all the lift things are probably going to be the same. Just applying a, an additional arg. And then lift zero is just pure. Lift one is just f map. Yeah, we we did both of these. We we did it as f map, and then we went back and and used those lift to. Oh, interesting. You can just say const id lift to const id. Yeah. I guess if we go back and look at lift two, it basically does this F map and then apply pattern. So F map and then apply. So it's basically that's that's pretty cool. And this one's just lift to const. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff that's like, oh yeah, that's glad I looked at the solutions. This one we got the same thing. Replicate A sequence. Oh yeah, so you can do a little edit reduction there. Remove the KAs by using composition. Mm. 
and then this is the same thing. And with Pluminator's help with the meta reduction. Yay, okay, cool, we got it. So I'm definitely gonna call it a night. <laughs> Super tired. Complete applicative exercises. Boom. All right. Very cool. Line optional is too much foreshadowing. It's meant for the monad module. Yeah. I got const ID in the first attempt as well. I went back and changed it. Flip const. Oh, yeah. Fmap followed by applies lift. Good night, Pluminator. Thanks for joining along. Always appreciate it. Good times. I guess I should do the, the typical streamer thing and say, you know, to smash the like button, subscribe, and uh, follow me on all the channels. But don't really, uh, don't really care. <laughs> so, yep, appreciate it, man. Catch you next time.